This video is going to look at the different ways that we can stub a void method when using Mockito. First, we're going to look at the different ways that we might stub the method when we have a spy and when we have a mock object. Then we're going to look at how we can throw exceptions from a void method within our mock or our spy. And then lastly, we're going to look at how we can use the answer functional interface to provide custom logic within our test class for when we want to achieve a slightly more customized void method within our test. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more weekly videos on Java, also subscribe to the channel. So if we take a look at the class we'll be testing, it's called chess player. And the chess player has a string, which will be their name, and also a category, which is also a string. We also store their age, the number of wins, and the number of points that this chess player has. And then in the constructor, we'll be instantiating the name and the age of our chess player. So we have two void methods that we'll be testing for the purpose of this video. One is called assign category. So first it will check if the age is less than five and if it is, we'll be throwing a runtime exception. Otherwise, if the age is less than 18, the category that the chess player has will be under 18s. Otherwise, it will be senior. And then the second void method we have is called assign score stats. And in theory, we'll be connecting to a database to obtain all of the wins that they have. Here, I'm just manually setting the wins to three. And then we'll also be calculating the, the number of points that the chess player has achieved. And here, I'm manually setting it to nine. So we're going to be testing these two void methods using Mokito. And we're going to look at the various ways that we can stub both of these methods. And I'm going to begin by testing the spy version of our chess player class. Okay, so if I were to call the chess player spies assign category method, we would expect this print line to be printed, and then we would expect the category to be assigned as senior because the age is going to be 30. And then I'm just going to assert what the category is. So we can see that the test has passed and that assigning category for Magnus has been printed and this has come from the assign category method just here. So with our spy object, because it represents a real object or the behavior of a real object, we can nullify the assign category method to actually do nothing. And we can do this by typing do nothing and defining exactly when we want to do nothing. And that will be whenever the chess player spy instance is calling the assign category method. So now that we know nothing is going to happen when we call assign category, if I call assign category just down below, this assertion should now fail because the assign category is going to be null. Now I'm just going to copy this method over and we can do the exact same but using a mock. So I'm just going to change my spy into a mock and I'm going to update some of the names. Now by using a mock instance as opposed to a spy instance, all of the methods that we have within our chess player instance are now going to be nullified. So when we call chess player mock assign category and chess player mock get category, both are going to return null. So this test should pass because when we call get category, we're going to return null. But just as we've done above with the spy instance, we've kind of flipped the way that the method behaves. So with the spy, we want to do nothing, whereas with a spy, the real sort of uh, instance application behavior is going to be executed. With a mock, it's all nullified. But with a mock, let's say we want to reverse that and we actually want to call the real method for both the assign category method and the get category method. So first I'm just going to control that whenever we call the get age method on our mock that we return 30. And now when we call assign category and get category, what we want our mock object to do is to actually call the real method. And we can achieve this by using the do call real method from the Makito library. We need to pass in the mock object that we would like to call it on and we need to specify the exact method on our mock that we would like to call the real method upon. So we'll have this for assign category, and then we'll also have this for get category. So now if I run this test, we can expect it to fail 
because we would expect this value to instead return senior. So we can see that the test has failed just as we expect it to. Now Mokite also allows us to mock the void methods that we have to also throw exceptions. So if I go back to the chess player class, I'm just going to change this exception to throw a normal exception. And as a result, we're going to have to throw that exception from the method call. I'm just gonna to have to make a few changes within my test class to allow this new thrown exception. And I'm just going to copy this test method where we're using a mock so we can now test for that exception. Now, once again, I have a chess player mock instance using the Mokito mock method, and we're going to call the assign category method on that mock instance. Now, what I want to test is that this exception is actually being thrown and that we don't have a runtime exception that otherwise won't require us to handle it by throwing it or by catching it in a try catch block. So what I will do for my test is expect an exception to be thrown. And then when we call the assign category method, I want to make sure that the exception is going to be thrown. So I can use Mokito to enforce the void method to now throw an exception rather than calling the real method or doing nothing. And I can achieve this through the do throw method. So we have do throw and then I pass in the class that I would like to be thrown, which is exception and I pass in the mock and I use the assign category method. So by forcing the exception class to be thrown from our mock instance of the chess player, we've partially covered the behavior of our assign category method where it's throwing an exception. We would also want to test where we're passing in an age that is less than five to test the inner logic of this method. However, if we just want to test that an exception can be thrown from this class, then we can use the do throw method with the mocked instance. Now the final test I'm going to write is going to use the do answer method from Mokito, and this will be the fourth and final way that we can stub a void method. So we're going to be stubbing the assign score stats method from our chess player class. Now the answer functional interface will be really useful for us to represent how this database might be working within the test, and we can extract it into its own instance within our test to be reused. However, here I'm just going to pass it within a Lambda expression so we can conveniently see how to use the do answer method from the Mokito library. So I've defined the chess player and the chess player spy, and what I want to do is call the assign score stats on our spy, but just above, I want to use a answer functional interface representation with a Lambda expression to enforce how this assign score stats method is going to behave. So first we want to type do answer. And as we can see, this accepts an instance of the answer functional interface. So I'm just going to pass in a Lambda where the invocation on the mock that we have, I'm just going to call it chess P. And now I'm going to extract an instance of the chess player by using the get mock method on the invocation. And then I'm just going to set the wins to three and to set the number of points to nine. So we're going to use this implementation whenever we want to call the chess player spy and then it's the assign score stats method call. I'm just going to finish this test off with a couple assertions on the number of wins and points. So the do answer method provides us with a lot of flexibility to how we can control void methods from a mock or from a spy. I'll just leave the card to my video on the answer functional interface if the logic behind the Lambda expression can be a little bit hard to follow. Uh, but that concludes this video on four different ways that we can stub a void method when using a mock or a spy with Mokito. So first we've had a look at how we can do nothing with a void method. Then we've looked at how we can use the real method, which is particularly useful when we're using a mocked object. I've looked at how we can throw an exception from a mock or a spy object. And then lastly, how we can provide custom logic using do answer for when we want to control the actual behavior of a void method for our tests.